Hey guys, welcome to Bible class. For this week, there's only one video for this week and I'm gonna show you how we're going to be doing Bible for the next two weeks because I wanted to do something a little bit different to get us into the focus of um, the birth of Jesus Christ. But obviously, you know, we've all read the birth of Jesus Christ and so I didn't want to just go through the Bible stories acting like we had never learned them before or anything like that. But it's really cool, honestly, you know, we can look at it and be like, oh, well, it's going through the same thing and same thing, and maybe you think it's not going to be interesting, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't want to think about that um, with the Word of God because we know that the Word of God is the living Word of God. The Holy Spirit is always speaking through His Word no matter if we've read the story ten bazillion times, right? Now, there's always a different way to look at it, not a different interpretation, not a different meaning to it but a different application to our lives, a different perspective that we can pull from it according to what's going on in our current life today, right? So we always want to come to the Word of God with an open heart that no matter what, um, how many times we've seen specific passages, how many times we've celebrated Christmas and the birth of Jesus Christ, that there's always something new that we can learn, always something new that we can focus on. And if not new, maybe it's a truth that we've forgotten or a truth that we haven't focused on in a long time, right? So, you know, the world always gets very busy, time always gets um, super fast, and we don't take time to meditate like we should on the Word of God and meditate on what he's doing in our own lives and what he wants us to always remember about his word, right? So that's going to um, be kind of where we're at this week. That's why there's only one um, there's only one Bible lesson this week and one Bible lesson next week because it's really going to be you and God's word more than me directing you um, through what we're going through. Okay, so there's two different packages that you have for Bible. I'm going to show them to you. And we'll pray when we get into the lesson for today, okay? We're going to be in this one this week, um, the brownish one, okay? The good news one. And then next week, we're going to be in the Prince of Peace one. This week, what you're going to do is go through the um, intro information with me. So that's going to be page 21. Page 22, well, this just page 22 is just scripture, but we're actually going to read it from our Bibles. Page 23 page 24 and then today you will answer the questions on page 25 after the um, lesson and I'll explain to you how to start to do your devos because you're going to do devo day, daily devotion day one today, day two tomorrow, day three Wednesday, day four Thursday and then day five Friday. Okay and then next week what will happen is we will be doing this one. I'm only going to go through the um, the intro information with you okay and then you're going to do one bible activity and the daily devotionals day one day two day three day four day five those are going to be optional for you if you want to further continue to study the bible story of um the birth of jesus christ next week while you're doing other homework or the week of christmas it's going to be a resource for you so the daily devotionals for next week are not a requirement the only requirement for next week are is going to be um, day one's Bible lesson on video and then the Bible activity that I'll explain next week. Okay, so let's get started. And we're going to start with our Bible verse. So if you have out your homework sheet, if not, it's on Isaiah 9-6. I'll read it to you in English and then um, we can read it out loud in Spanish from our Bibles. Okay, let's pray you guys. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today and for the opportunity to enter into December, a time to take time to celebrate you, to celebrate sending your son to die on the cross for our sins, Lord, and that you have a very specific and special reason why you allowed him first to come as a baby, that you allowed him to grow up on earth, that you allowed him to suffer and allowed him to be tempted in every way that we're going to be tempted as well, Lord. I pray that you help us to remember that the details of um, Jesus' birth is something that speaks a lot about your character and about how you want us to live as well. Lord, help us to become more and more like Jesus every day. I pray that you be with Kelly and with Angelo and with Ismar and Ashley and Paula and Sadie and Jose and Junior, that you speak to each one of our hearts, Lord, during these in the next two weeks where we study your word and study um, 
the story of Jesus' birth, Lord, something that's very special, and that no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter um, if our hearts have been hard this year towards certain things, whether or not our hearts have been hurt this year by certain things, um, discouraged by things this year, that you help us to work through those and process those and end this year um, focused on you and focused on your will for our lives. We love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here we go. Let's do our verse. Isaiah 9, 6. I like to go into Isaiah every Christmas to remember that, you know, Isaiah is full, you guys, full of prophecies about the um, birth of Jesus Christ, about the death of Jesus Christ. Birth mo more than anything for Isaiah. Remember in Isaiah 7, 14, it's the famous verse that tells us, Por tanto, el Señor mismo os dará señal, he aquí que la Virgen concebirá y dará a luz un hijo y llamará su nombre Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? God with us. And the verse that we're going to go through this week is going to be that you need to send me a video on by Friday, please. It's Isaiah 9, 6. Porque un niño nos es nacido, hijo nos es dado. Y el principado sobre su hombro, y se llamará su nombre admirable, consejero, Dios fuerte, Padre eterno, príncipe de paz. The paz thing is the thing that um, I really think about this year, you guys, because to me it doesn't seem like there's any peace on earth anymore. You know, anywhere you turn, that there's just fighting and contiendas, there's falta de unidad. Honestamente, there's a lot of pain out with like any kind of world leaders that you look at right now, any kind of um, governments that you look at right now. In the United States, is a huge mess. I was talking to my mom today about that, that it's, it's embarrassing sometimes to look at what's happening in one of the most powerful countries in the world, you know, the country that we're from, the country that should be a Christian nation that um, should spread the, the good news of Jesus Christ around the world, and it has nothing to do with that anymore. It doesn't stand on that anymore. And we see all the corruption, and we see all the fighting, and we see all the, the hurting, and we look at it and we say, that's not peace. You know, that's not peace on earth, like the angels declare to the shepherds. But then we remember that Jesus is the peace. And we have spent so long pushing Jesus out of the earth. We push Jesus out of the world, out of everything in our lives as a people. And that's why we don't have peace anymore. God gives us an opportunity for peace and we can still have peace in our heart and we need to, you guys, we need to. We need to remember that Jesus Christ is our peace and that we don't seek peace from other places. You know, and that's gonna be a lot of what next week's um, devotionals are about because it's called the Prince of Peace. But you know, we can't forget that we look at the world and we see the, the, the lack of peace. And we have to remember that Jesus Christ is still peace. Jesus Christ does not change. God does not change. And so we can't get this illusion and say, well, maybe Jesus really isn't peace. No, he is. He is. But what are we doing with the peace? Right? The peace is inside of us, you guys. The peace is the Holy Spirit inside of us. But if we're not if we're not working to put that peace into the world, if we're not working to show the peace that God has given us to the people of the world and to treat them like we have peace in our heart, to treat them like we have Jesus Christ dwelling in us, then there's not going to be peace on this earth. We have to remember that Satan is the prince of this world. That it's not Jesus Christ, the prince of this world. And then the first John 4 says that if anybody is going to see God, it's going to be God in us. Because Satan is the prince of this world. So he's not going to show us peace and he's not going to show us God. We are going to be the ones to show the world God. And so if we are lacking peace, it's because the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, is not spreading peace inside the world anymore. And we have to wonder why the church of Jesus Christ is not spreading peace inside the world anymore. And it's because we decide that we want to be against each other so much that we don't even have time to spread peace. Because we can't even have peace with ourselves because we've become too selfish as people. And we don't focus on God. We don't focus on what he has us here for. Because the world has become so much about us. 
Our lives become so much about us, what makes us happy, what makes us comfortable, what's convenient for us, what, what makes us more successful, what, may, what gives us more time to relax, more time for vacation, more time to do what we want to do, what we deserve. We deserve to be happy. We deserve this. We deserve this. And we do so much of that focus, the self-love that, that the whole world says that we need to have, but it's totally out of balance. It's totally out of balance because it's not to make us healthy anymore to do God's work. No, it has nothing to do with God's work. It has everything to do with us. And so we really need to just take time sometimes and remember why God has us here on this earth. When we're Christians, God has us here on this earth to fulfill what he says in 2 Peter 3, 9, which is that he is patiently waiting for more people to become saved before he sends Jesus Christ back to this earth to take the Christians and destroy the rest of the world. Right? We don't want to come to the tribulation, you guys. We don't want to come to the end of the world and have regrets that we should have told more people, that we should have spent less time focused on ourselves and more fo time focused on God. We have to do it now. We have to take time now. We have to take advantage now that God has given us that time here on earth. And that it's not for us to to do more of what we love to do and more of what um, makes us happy, et cetera, et cetera. No, that God, that we need to take those passions, we need to take the things that make us happy and use them for God. He's made every single one of us people with a great personality, people with um, that are happy for different reasons, so that we can reach other people for Jesus Christ. Not just pass our tiempo here in, in the tierra like it's one big vacation. Okay, so it will be good to take some time this week and just stop and remember what God did for us. And remember that Jesus came to this earth as a baby when he didn't need to do that. That it wasn't just the act on the cross where he died and God was, had to turn his back on him. That that was for us. His whole life was for us. Because if it was just going to the cross, well, he could have done that in one day. But it wasn't about that. It was everything about his life which is super, super, super cool. Okay, so that's our verse for this week. Here we go. Let's get out your good news. Okay. We're going to read the, let's read the chapter first. The chapter that we're reading today is Luke 2. I'm going to start at verse number 1 and then go to 19. Okay, and then we're going to read it in chunks like we usually do with the questions here. Okay. Some of the questions we're going to answer together. All the questions on here are your notes. You don't have to take notes separate from this unless you want to. Okay? And then I'll tell you where you are going to start to take your own notes. Okay, here we go. Luke 2, 1 through 19. Aconteció en aquellos días que se promulgó un edicto de parte de Augusto César que todo el mundo fuese empadronado. Este primer censo se hizo siendo sireño, sireño, perdón, no, 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 gobernador de Siria. E iban todos para ser empadronados, cada uno a su ciudad. Y José subió de Gal Galilea, de la ciudad de Nazaret, a Judea, a la ciudad de David, que se llama Belén por cuanto era de la casa y familia de David, para ser empadronado con María, su mujer, desposada con él, la cual estaba encinta. Y aconteció que estando ellos allí, se cumplieron los días de su alumbramiento, y dio a luz a su hijo primogénito, y lo envolvió en pañales, y lo acostó en un pesebre porque no había lugar para ellos en el mesón. Había pastores en la misma región que velaban y guardaban las vigilias de la noche sobre su rebaño. Y aquí se les presentó un ángel del Señor y la gloria del Señor los rodeó, rodeó del resplandor y tuvieron gran temor. Pero el ángel les dijo, no temáis, porque he aquí os doy nuevas de gran gozo, que será para todo el pueblo, que os ha nacido hoy en la ciudad de David un Salvador, que es Cristo el Señor. 
Esto os servirá de señal. Hallaréis al niño envuelto en panal, pañales, acostado en un pesebre. Y repentinamente apareció con el ángel una multitud, una multitud de las huestes celestiales que alababan a Dios y decían, Gloria a Dios en las alturas y en la paz, en la tierra paz, buena voluntad para con los hombres. Sucedió que cuando los ángeles se fueron de ellos al cielo, los pastores se dijeron unos a otros, Pasemos pues hasta Belén y veamos esto que ha sucedido y, y que, que el Señor nos ha manifestado. Vinieron pues apresuradamente y hallaron a María y a José y al niño acostado en el pesebre. Y al verlo dieron a conocer lo que se les había dicho acerca del niño. Y todos los que oyeron se maravillaron de lo que los pastores les decían. Pero María guardaba todas esas cosas, meditándolas en su corazón. Ok, so look what it says on page 21. This is very interesting. What is this week's focus? It says, our culture deeply values the idea of celebrities, right? You agree with that? Think about who are the famous people that you could, like as soon as I say, think of a celebrity, think of a famous person, who do you think of? The media and everybody focus on those people. They want to know everything about those people's lives, right? Our culture deeply values the idea of a celebrity. We all like the idea of being important, powerful, famous, or influential. If we can't actually be those things, then we want to be around people who are, right? Okay, you have your famous footballist that you follow, your famous influencer that you follow, your famous fashion person that you follow. Whoever it is, we either want to be those people or around those people or know everything about those people. One of the most interesting things, though, about Jesus, however, is that in his early years and at his birth, most people would not have known that there was anything special about him. It wasn't until he began healing people years later that people took notice. Jesus began his time on earth by being born to a woman in a small town in the middle of nowhere in a barn. And some of the first people who celebrated his birth were shepherds, not exactly social influencers. All this illustrates that God brings salvation to earth in the most humble and remarkable way possible. And that's what the central truth is. That's what the theme is that we're going to focus on. God brings salvation to earth in the most humble, humble and remarkable way possible. Do you guys agree? It was a humble way that God brought Jesus to this earth. And what does that tell you? That the world's perspective of something important and something famous and something great is completely different from God's perspective. And every day we need to be focused on putting ourselves more into God's perspective and not the world, which is hard. And you got to be careful because the world is right in front of your face. The world is everywhere you go, on your phone, with your friends, on your television, and your computer, right? Screaming at you to be exactly like the world. But we need to seek God because what does God say? If you draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Right? But God's not going to make you live for him. That is our decision. So we're going into conversation questions. It says, read Luke 4 7, 4 through 7 to answer these questions. It says in Luke 4 through 7, 2, 4 through 7, Y José subió de Galilea, de la ciudad de Nazaret, a Judea, a la ciudad de David, que se llama Belén, por cuanto era de la casa y familia de David. We know the whole story with that, that they were called for their censo, right, their, their um, counting of the people. Para ser empadronado con María, su mujer, desposada con él, la cual estaba en cinta. Y aconteció que estando ellos allí, se cumplieron los días de su alumbramiento y dio a luz a su hijo primogénito en, y lo envolvió en pañales y lo, aco, lo acostó en un pesebre porque no había lugar para ellos en el mesón. Había, oh no, no more. Okay, so look, the history says right here that the word in, 
which was the word in Spanish would have been meson. It could have meant the part behind the hotel, or it could have meant the sala, okay? But either way, you can read it all by yourself if you want to. Either way, there was no room for them wherever they went. They were either in a crowded little space of the sala or they were back behind where the animals were. It says at the bottom of this, neither view diminishes how powerful Jesus' birth narrative is. Remember, we are talking about the Messiah, God in human flesh, the King of kings and Lord of lords, where, where, pardon, wherever he was born, in a crowded family room or in a barn, Luke is highlighting God's profound and humble love demonstrated in his willingness to enter our world. So Jesus had to be willing, and it's super true, I was reading this part right here. Jesus had to be willing to enter the world humbly like that, even though he was the prince, of, he was, he's the son of, Jesus, of God. He sits at his right hand, but he came to earth humbly for us. So look at question number one. It says, list some of the details Luke mentions about the world into which Jesus was born. Why do you think Luke listed these details? Okay, he says to start back at verse one. What are some of the details? Look at it with me. He's in the world where Caesar Augustus was ruling. That means that it was the Roman times. The Jews did not have, have their own um, country at this time. There was a tax, the impuesto, the census. They had to go back to their town. There was no room for them. So they had to have their baby in a very uncomfortable area. Right? Why do you think Luke listed those details? I think part of it is to show that there was nothing royal about his birth. There was nothing important and famous. You know, like when the baby of the, the um, Prince of England is born, all the paparazzi are outside watching to see what outfit, what outfit they put the baby in, what beautiful dress Kate Middleton was wearing and everything, right? There was nothing like that. Joseph went back to a small little town where there wasn't even room for him. They didn't make room for him. They didn't kick anybody else out for him. No. They put him in a small little place so they could have their baby in an uncomfortable way because that was what Jesus was all, is all about. That we're humble people. We put other people first. That's what we're supposed to do like him. Look okay, so at in verse number two. Recall, and you can have different answers, guys. It's your opinion. It's asking you, right? Recall that Gabriel told Mary that her son would be the Messiah, the Son of God, and that he would reign forever. That's in Luke 1, 31 through 35. Given that description, do any of the circumstances of Jesus' birth surprise you? So let's look at that. Luke 1, 31 through 35. Y ahora concebirás en tu vientre y darás a luz un hijo y llamarás su nombre Jesús. Este será grande y será llamado Hijo del Altísimo, y el Señor Dios le dará el trono de David su padre, y reinará sobre la casa de Jacob para siempre, y su reino no tendrá fin. Entonces María dijo al ángel, ¿Cómo será esto? Pues no conozco varón. Respondiendo al ángel le dijo, El Espíritu Santo vendrá sobre ti, y el poder del Altísimo te cubrirá, con su sombra, por lo cual también el santo ser que nacer, será, será, será llamado Hijo de Dios. So I'll let you answer that question. What surprises you that the anuncio is huge, saying this is going to be some gran, gran cosa for, um, the, for Jesus Christ to come on the earth as a baby, and then he gets born where he was born. What, what is surprising about that? Go ahead and write down your response. Then it says, look at 8 through 14 of Luke. Why do you think Jesus' birth was first announced to shepherds? What does that say about Jesus? Now, it's interesting about the shepherds. Let's look at this really quickly on page 24. The culture. I love this, to know this about the shepherds. 
socially, and think about David. Nobody respected David. They didn't even expect him to be the king. They didn't even bring him in when Samuel came to see all the sons of Jesse. Remember? Shepherds are not respected. It says socially, shepherds weren't the most popular people in ancient Israel. It was a dirty job that was typically performed by the poor. Shepherds were considered ceremonially unclean because of the duties their occupation required of them, caring for animals, etc. Also, their work schedule often prevented them from being cleansed at the temple. Yet, this is interesting, their primary job was to protect the sheep that were often used in temple sacrifices and which have provided food for countless families. So while they didn't get a lot of respect, their job was incredibly important. While most people in the ancient world didn't value shepherds or acknowledge their incredibly important job, God did. He chose a group of shepherds to be the first to hear of the Savior's birth and the first ones to share it. Okay, cool, right? So go ahead and answer question three. About what does that say about Jesus? Answer question four, where would the shepherds find the Messiah? What sign did God give them? Okay, I'm going to let you guys answer these questions because I don't want to just be on the video for nada, right? And what can we learn about Jesus' mission on earth from verse 14? And what about our own mission? What about our own mission? Verse 14 says, Gloria a Dios en las alturas y en la tierra paz, buena voluntad, Para con los hombres. Think about that, you guys. Think about that. What does that say about our mission? Okay? And then the last questions are about how did the shepherds respond to the Lord's message? What are ways that we might follow their examples? And I'm going to let you guys answer the rest of these questions because they're very interesting and very great questions to think about. Our responsibility on how we need to live for Jesus Christ every day for the way that he came to earth for us, okay? Let me show you how you're gonna do your devotions and I'm gonna let you go for today. Okay, here we go. Okay, so your homework for today is to finish those questions that I showed you and then do daily devotion one. I wanna do these, I want you guys to do these this week to show you different ways to study God's word, okay? What you're gonna do is in a, on a piece of paper every day, you're gonna write these arrows. And you're going to answer the questions that go with these arrows about the verses that it tells you to look up. And then you're going to answer these questions and read this devotional and do this stuff. Okay? It's a way to show you some perspectives about the Word of God instead of just opening the Bible, reading a little bit, and going about your day. It's to help you apply it. It's different ways to study the Word of God. It's very interesting. Okay? This arrow means... What does this passage say? You don't have to write a lot. Just what does this passage say? What is it trying to say? What does the passage tell us about God? What does this passage mean to its original audience? Like back then, what was the culture of it? How does this passage change the way I relate to people? What does this passage tell us about man? How does this passage prompt me to pray? And what does this passage demand of me? Okay? It's just different ways. And it doesn't have to be long, you guys. It's just reflections about what the Word of God is the Word of God is saying. Okay? Then you, or you could do this first. You read this stuff. Um, there's some a prompt about how you can pray today to help you focus in. Okay? This is just to help you focus on the Christmas story in kind of a different way this year. Okay? To see other things that God wants to teach you through it. Through looking at it from a different perspective. That's all. Okay? So I hope you have fun with it. Let me know if you have any questions, and it'll be a really cool time, I think, for all of us to study it this way. Okay, let's pray, you guys. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today, and thank you for the opportunity to study your word in a different way this week. I pray that you help us to go about it with open hearts. Clean our hearts, Lord. Please forgive us for the things that we um, do against you, and help us to be stronger and better people for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys. Have a great day.